Hi, you probably know me, I'm Michael. Uh, you probably recognize me from our videos of Playing Scared, and you might recognize my voice from our Challenge Time videos. Behind the camera, which is pointing at me, is my good friend Matt. Say hi. Hello. You might recognize his voice as well from the Challenge Time videos. We're from Zero Ping, and today we're building a new PC. Main reason for this is our editing system conked it out a, a while ago. So if you're watching this video now and you can see me at all, it means I didn't cock it up and it's working. So let's go through the basics. These are all empty boxes. None of that really matters right now. Except for this. General basics when building a system. Work out where the front is, work out where the side is. Realize there are screws you have to undo, which I've already taken care of. The inside of your system is pretty basic. Make sure you take everything out beforehand as we already have, and do read the manuals. I've taken advantage to do this so I know where things go to speed up the whole process for us today. First things first, we're gonna put the power supply in. Now you need to make sure you get a power supply that's gonna run everything you need. If you're running multiple graphics cards and all sorts of whiz-bang features and God knows what's it, make sure you crank the power, don't get something cheap, and make sure you buy reputable brands because you really don't want that to fry out on you. You'll do untold damage to the rest of your system and you won't be replacing a cheap component. And that's the one I want. Find the correct mounting points. It's always a good idea. Oh. And sometimes life gives you options. And sometimes it doesn't. Yeah, that was right. Now we're choosing to mount this one upside down because we have some clearance space at the bottom and it's gonna blow all the hot air down the bottom through this bottom grate. It should ensure decent airflow without heating up the rest of the system. All right, now I've got our motherboard. There are a lot of different things going around the internet regarding not frying componentry. One of the old adages is always touch the inside of your case. In theory, it should be grounded and it should prevent you from blowing something up or you know, disrupting unnecessarily. There are a lot of people out there that will tell you that doesn't work. And a lot of people who will promise that it does. And then there are people that tell you that you can submerge your iPhone on the latest iOS update. Do a lot of research and just take general precautions. Don't wear anything too baggy or anything that builds up a lot of static because you will do untold damage. Don't be silly about it. Next step is always deciding what you want to install next. There's no set pattern to it. As long as you don't have any power going through the system, you can't do too much wrong. So for argument's sake, let's start by installing the graphics card, the CPU, sorry. We're popping an i7 in here, because why wouldn't you? The number one thing you can get wrong when installing a CPU is ignoring the pins. There's a set pattern in here that you need to follow. If you install it wrong, you're going to break something very important to you. Generally, there are two little notches, and that'll help guide you in. If you can't line it up with the notches, don't put the lid down the lid is literally either going to push them all in or break everything. Now, when you buy a CPU, like an i7 or just about anything, you're going to get a fan for it and it's going to have thermal paste already on there. If for some reason you don't have thermal paste, don't stick it on the CPU. You're not going to get proper conduction and you're just going to burn the thing out. Again, you've got four little holes over here. Marry them up and pop them in. At the top end of our motherboard, we have one that actually says CPU fan. Now, 
It's debatable as to whether you should install a graphics card or the RAM first. Some can get in the way of others. It's basically just trial and error. Have a bit of a fiddle. Don't leave the plastic on unless you like the smell of burning rubber in your systems. The graphics card inevitably goes into the big blue one. Nice, solid funk. That is for our front USB ports, which are USB 3. So we're just going to give ourselves a little bit of lead. And we've got a blue port in here. Again, I consulted the manual, and I know that is our USB 3 port. And we can start connecting our RAM. Uh, we've gone with 16 gig because of obvious reasons. Well, I like to imagine. Now, we're running an SSD as the primary drive on this because honestly, they're cheap enough nowadays. Everyone should be running SSDs if they can. They're so fast. It's, it's seriously amazing. If you have any doubts about how fast an SSD can be, consider how fast your smartphone boots up. Now imagine your computer could do it that quickly. And unless you're running like an iPhone 3GS, because seriously, get with the times. There we go. And that, for all extensive purposes, is a built PC. Now, provided I haven't done anything wrong, it will start up and we'll get everything installed.